John Frederick, America's Godzilla of Truth, popular and proficient in picking politics with prophetic precision. And now, Jay Fred's picking football. Are y'all ready for this? All across the airwaves and streams of the John Fredericks Media Network, when the game is on your mind and money's on the line, Godzilla wins. Your guide to picking football winners with America's Godzilla of Truth, John Fredericks, along with his partners in point picking, Jack and Nate. Also, weekly contributors to the website of winners, GodzillaWins.com. Before you make that play, hear what J. Fred has to say. Godzilla wins on the John Frederick's Media Network. Oh, yeah, for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> you are on Godzilla Wins. Great to have you with us. Go to GodzillaWins.com. You're with your host, John Fredericks, our two panelists, my son, Jack Fredericks. He's live in Mississippi at the casino there in Tunica. And of course, Nate Perry is live at Reno. We got big games coming up and we've got all the action for you. Go to GodzillaWins.com, Facebook it, join it up. You can uh, register to win $5,000 free, no obligation. All you have to do is go to GodzillaWins.com. We got fresh content every day. If you want a website that's going to talk to you about sports from a fan's, fan's perspective, and give you the great picks every single day, NBA, NFL, you name it. We got it. Golf, NASCAR. You want to go to GodzillaWins.com. That's GodzillaWins.com. And you, my friends, are going to be good to go. This show brought to you in part by our great friends at DraftKings. I got to tell you what, you got to get in the action now. I'm live in Phoenix, Arizona's got it. Nate's in Nevada. He's got it. Jackson, Mississippi. Two teams, this is it. This is the conference championship games. Four NFL teams, two conference champion games, and only a few more shots to win big on the playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Counting down to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. You can do that right now while you're tuned into us. Not a new customer, no problem. You can feel the conference championship thrills with step-up same-game parlays. Now, take your shot at an even bigger NFL payout and boost your winnings each leg up to 100%. That's unbelievable. You can do it in any of the games this week. And plus, you're going to get prop picks from Nate and Jack. All you got to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code Godzilla. That's promo code Godzilla. New customers can bet $5 on the conference championship game right now and get $200 in free bets instantly. Like as soon as you put the bet in, it goes in your account. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with Godzilla. Must be 21 or older, Virginia only, or states where it applies. Bonus issued as free bets. One boost per eligible game. Opt-in required. 10 plus leg required for 100% deposit boost. Deposit parley and wagering restrictions apply. Eligibility in terms at sportsbook.com, draftkicks.com slash football terms. If you or somebody you know has a gambling problem, call their problem gambling helpline at 888-532-3500, and you are good to go. Okay, we've got uh, we got to get our uh, picks coming up, guys. Hey, hey, look, thanks for being with us. Uh, Sheriff Clark, we believe, is um, going to be with oh, He's there, right? We got Sheriff Clark with us. Yeah. We're on Getter Live as well. Let's start with the games last week, folks, before we get to this week. And um, let's go with the uh, start off. We got Sheriff Clark with us. Start off with the uh, the Dallas game. Uh, I just, a lot of us thought that, that I bet Dallas. I picked that Dallas. That was a, a loser. And um, you look at these Cowboys, uh, uh, Dak throwing inter interceptions. I mean, they had that game in hand. And again, they just can't get past the first or second round. Dallas knocked out of the playoffs. Sheriff Clark with us. Sheriff, you had an epic Twitter rant on that Dallas game. You're, you're a diehard Cowboys fan. What went down and what, the, what do the Cowboys have to do, Sheriff Clark? Well, you know, I have to relive this again, but that's all right. You know, it's disappointing. I mean, the, the reality is only one team is going to be standing at the end and the other 31 teams in the NFL, and that's within any sport, really, you know, gets to hold up the prize and their fans get to spend the whole offseason gloating and enjoying a championship. But I'll tell you what, when it comes to the Cowboys, it's the same old thing. And it's not 
day is Dak Prescott. He's the weak link in this thing. I said all season, John, you and I talked all through the NFL season. I said the Cowboys will go as far as Dak Prescott takes them. His problem is he's too inconsistent. I think he's at the top of his ladder. I don't think he can go any higher. You see the same things over and over and over every season. This is his seventh season, for heaven's sakes. He hasn't sniffed an NFC conference championship game, much less one one. You look at the two of the quarterbacks going into this weekend, Patrick Mahomes, five straight AFC conference championships, five straight. He's only been in the league six years. And then you look at Joe Burrow. He's been in the league three years, two straight AFC conference finals. He won one last year, got to the Super Bowl, hasn't won that, but that's in three years. And Mahomes has done it in six. Dax in his seventh, and he's not close. So they're not going, they're not going to get, they're not going to get to the promised land with Dak Prescott, but they're stuck with him. $45 million price tag. They need to improve at running back. Uh, Zeke's got to be gone. They got to get some younger offensive line. There's a lot. That's the offseason talk. But last week, it was the same thing all over again. You had a great game against Tampa Bay by Dak Prescott two weeks ago. And then it's followed up with a clunker in San Francisco. And that's the bottom line of what's wrong with him is he can't put together consecutive games when they count. So, you know, we're stuck, uh, like I said, frustration at the end. A lot of frustrated teams right now. Not, I get that, but I don't want to be in that group. I wish we'd be in the talking this weekend about the four remaining teams, uh, you know, in the conference championships. But, you know, I guess next year. You know, uh, uh, um, let's bring in uh, Nate Perry, uh, our analyst here in uh, Reno, been with us from the from the beginning part of Godzilla Wednesday. You can read Nate's column; he's it's up right now. Just go to GodzillaWins.com. Nate, you're off. You're a Cowboys fan, diehard. Also, um, you know, I bet Dallas last week. I felt really good at the half. I felt good in the third quarter, but they just don't. They don't win the big games, and I don't know what happens to them. I mean. I guess you can blame Dak, but as for your own perspective, uh, as a Cowboys fan, Nate, what do you think has that? What is wrong with this team? Um, I mean, some of it's just like organizational, right? I mean, <laughs> it's always going to be sort of a mess with Jerry Jones at the helm. That's just sort of how it goes. Um, and I think, I think a lot of it, I mean, I, I don't think that it's Dak. I think that some of it is just coaching. I'm, I mean, I, I hate to just sort of bang the drum on like, you know, fire Mark, Mike McCarthy, but I think that's some of it. I mean, he, it, it's clear that he lied during his interview with the Cowboys that he'd done a lot of works on like analytics, end of game scenarios, sort of things that put them in a position to win because he messes it up all the time. This isn't like a new thing for the Cowboys, it's not a new thing that they do something stupid to lose a game. And they make bad decisions as a sort of team to lose games. So for me, it just feels like more of the same. I, I hate to be the guy that's like fire the coach all the time uh, because I hated Jason Garrett. I don't love Mike McCarthy. I would love to have someone who is just like, you know, good, like Sean Payton, but that pick pro will probably take draft capital and other things. Uh, so, I mean, for me, it's, it's probably just coaching. I mean, the defense gave us a chance. The defense for so long was so bad and it, it's good. Now it's, it's the strength of the team and all the offense needs to do is just score more than 12 points. Basically. I mean, the cow or the Niners have one touchdown for the entire game. They score one touchdown and they beat us. And that's just horrible. Uh, so for me, it just feels like, like, You're not putting Dak in the right spots to be successful. Obviously, the running back position, like Sheriff Clark said, is an issue, um, you know, because Zeke is obviously getting overpaid for, for the production that he's, that he's offering, and, and Pollard getting hurt was, was horrible uh, for I mean, the team. Didn't, and, you, and didn't you feel, didn't you both feel when, when Pollard went out of the game, I think that was in, what, late in the first half, that, that you, you can almost feel the, the wind going out of the team's sails. You can almost feel that they just don't have a lot of uh confidence in uh in Zeke and so Pollard went out and kind of I mean he's such a huge weapon for them um and then that one didn't look I mean uh, uh, you know uh, my quarterback's Tannehill so I don't have any r r room to talk here 
but but one of those interceptions that Dak threw was like, what are you, what are you doing? I mean, there was nobody there. I mean, you just can't do that in a conference in a in a division championship game trying to get the conference finals. You just can't throw that pass. Uh, now, well, luckily, I'm, you know, Dallas's defense, uh, you know, held him to three. But you, I mean, just that ball he threw, like there was nobody there. And it's like, do you just have brain fart or what, Sheriff? I, I agree. I agree with you, John. Um, and, and as to the, the last analysis that we just heard, I'm a big Mike, Mike McCarthy fan. Uh, Mike's not the problem. Don't forget, Mike's not calling the offensive play. So when you talk about putting Dak in the positions where he can succeed, uh, that's Kellen Moore, and I'm a proponent of getting rid of Kellen Moore. I think the only way we get rid of get rid of him is if somebody hires him as a head coach, and I wish they would, so that we could get rid of him. His offense is vanilla. His offense is, does has no imagination. He's got incredible talent uh, at the wide out. I think Michael Gallup is solid. C.D. Lamb is one of the top receivers in the league. Yet you don't see week after week. CD getting 10 catches for, you know, 170 yards, like some of the other greats uh, in, in the game of football today. You don't see that. You'll see a game here or there, and that's not his fault. That's play calling. And it's just, it, it's not imaginative. This is an offensive league now. You have to have a dynamic offense. Look at the four remaining teams. They got dynamic offenses, for heaven's sake. So, mm -hmm. you know, we can argue back and forth about, well, is it this guy? Is it that guy? Is it McCarthy? McCarthy's teams are well prepared. McCarthy got them through that stretch when Dak broke his thumb. They had to go five weeks without their starting quarterback, and they were able to keep it together, patch it together to continue the season. That's great coaching. That's not good coaching. Only great coaches can do that sort of thing. Jack, what was uh, what was your overall view of this game? Obviously, you 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 picked the Niners, uh, so you had that win and you picked against Dallas and last week you were right and you said right in the show you know Dak Prescott is going to find a way to lose this game and you were absolutely right that's what he did um what was your view on that Jack well I mean I think there's a couple things here because I think Sheriff Clark is correct in his um assumption that um Mike McCarthy uh, isn't running the offense so maybe you blame Kellen Moore for not uh providing the scheme with enough um uh variety for especially for a team like the 49ers who have such a great defense so i suppose kellen moore is to blame for that my my thing with dallas has always been and i think this is a mike mccarthy thing and i don't know cowboys fans might disagree they may just say well this is like a cowboys thing since the 90s but uh mccarthy at the end of games he stinks at clock management and the, his players are always clueless as to how to make the smart play in in game um, at the end of game. Like, I mean, there's obviously last year, the, um, the, the, the DAC mistake was a, a big example, but this year Dawson Knox, like not being able to get out of bounds on that one play that really kind of um, screwed up the end of game. I just, my thing with McCarthy is that at the, at the, at these end of games and that's the coaching, it just seems like his players are absolutely clueless as to, how to put themselves in the right position to win games. Now, as far as Dak goes, I mean, this is like, and I'm not a Cowboys fan, and I don't mean to come at you guys. I mean, I'm sorry that you lost. That's very sad. No, do it. Do it. Yeah, you look, deserve it. Yeah, for real. Um, <laughs> thank good. you. Thank you for giving me the, um, the, the ability to do that because my thing with Cowboys fans is like, first of all, you guys complain all the time. Like, there's only four teams left. The rest of us, you guys complain almost as much as my dad about the Titans who haven't been in the hunt all season, really. Um, didn't make the playoffs. Cowboys fans, all they do is complain. And like, my question to y'all is who out there do you think is a better option than Dak? Every time you guys lose in the playoffs, you go 10 and six, 10 and seven, 12 and five, whatever. You have a great regular season. You win a playoff game. You get to the divisional round. You lose to a really good 49ers team that might win the Super Bowl. And then you're like, we'll get rid of Dak. And I just like, is it Zach Wilson, Justin Fields? Where are the quarterbacks out here that you're like, oh, he's the guy I want in Dallas? And you don't say Aaron Rodgers because that, I mean, oh my gosh, you know, well, I, why I mean, that's the, the easy answer. Why not get the guy from the Why not get the guy from the Raiders? Car. You know what? I proposed that in a tweet last week after Sunday's loss. I said I, I got an idea, trade him straight up for Derek Carr. And here's why I say that. They're both making about the same amount of money. So there'll be no cap hits. You don't need to give up draft capital in either team. Give each of them 
a, a new environment. Give them, each of them a fresh start. Let Dak start fresh in, in Vegas. They have some talent there. Let Derek Carr, who I think is a better in-game quarterback in terms of decision-making, maybe not athletic ability, but the problem with Dallas at the quarterback is not athletic ability. It's in the head, for heaven's sakes. And Dak makes some boneheaded plays uh, when, it, when it most matters. So there's one uh, example. I know that will never happen, but, you know, you asked the question, I answered it. All right. Well, listen, uh, you guys, you Cowboys fans, I know it's tough, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> We have high standards, though. That's why we I ju- I ju- Well, I just don't. Th- I just don't think you're gonna like it, it. My 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 sons are telling me, you know, Titans are not going to win with Tannehill. You know, I was at I was at the RNC meeting this past week, and I met a guy that's a Bengals fan who I think was uh, executive director of Ohio GOP, and he said he said you guys should have beat us in the division championship uh, twelve months ago, but you, you guys are. Do you really think you're ever going to win with Ryan Tannehill? I'm just. I just don't think you're going to. Guys, are, guys are going to win with Dak. And he. Had, this is the thing. He had that great game against Tampa. It was a great game he had, and then he follows it up with another stinker. So you, you guys got a lot of issues. All right, I want to get to the um, the Bengals Buffalo game last week. So I got to tell you guys, a lot of things in football don't shock me. Right. Because, it, you know, it's week to week, any given Sunday, you always have upsets. And we had the season with a lot of underdogs winning, covering a lot. So nothing shocks me. That game at Buffalo in the snow absolutely shocked me watching that thing, guys, because Cincinnati, which has not ever been known as a physical team. Right. They've been known as kind of a finesse team. So they go to Buffalo in the snow. And they absolutely blow the Bills off the line of scrimmage on both sides, defense and offense, in the trenches. They manhandled them. I don't think Buffalo had two or three legitimate stops. Maybe they had one sack. I mean, they just blew through them. You look at that Cincinnati defense, and then they had three guys out in the O-line, and they completely controlled the line of scrimmage with three guys off the practice squad. And they just, they look bigger than Buffalo. And I'm sitting to myself watching this game in the snow, thinking, how did this team win 14 games this season? I remember at the beginning of the season, I think they were 2 or 3-0. and They blew everybody out. They blew the Titans out by, you know, 50-7 to or something. Everybody was saying they're the pick to go to the Super Bowl. And then they get blown out at home by Cincinnati. Nate, Nate square that for us. Uh, I mean... It- the Bengals are just good, right? We're, I think we're I think we're so used in our sort of like consciousness for the for the Bengals to be the bungles that it's hard for us to wrap our head around the fact that they're just actually good now. I mean, Joe Burrow is like a legitimate top tier quarterback. The guy has has risen to the occasion since he was at LSU in terms of just being productive, uh, and the and the moment doesn't seem to phase him, and it showed here. I mean the 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 Bills just didn't look like poised for this game, which is weird to say, but they're also a team that's always struggled kind of, kind of in these big spots, right? They haven't made it to the Super Bowl. They get kind of close, but they don't quite get there. Uh, they had, and they had a lot of penalties in this game uh, that, that sort of hamstrung them as well. They just didn't look like as good of a team. They couldn't establish the run and, and they got a ton of penalties. Um, and, that, and I think that's probably what sunk them. Uh, to be quite honest, I mean, you know, Joe Burrow's great, but but the Bills really did this themselves. It, it, it felt like watching the game. All right, let's get the Sheriff Clark watching that game. I mean, what, what every I mean, the Buffalo was a five and a half point favorite in that game, and they were never in the game. Even to win the game, they're five and a half point favorite at home. You turn it on; it's in the snow. They get just manhandled. Sheriff, what was your take on that, Sheriff Clark? I sat there in amazement for over three hours watching Joe Burrow lead his team up and down the field in that snow, minus three starting offensive linemen, for heaven's sakes. Joe Burrow doesn't give a damn. Joe Burrow is going to put his team on his back, and he's going to carry that team. That guy's got swagger. That guy's got grit. That guy, is the moment is never too big for him, unlike the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. So, you know, you watch that, and and – you know, everything that Buffalo had been through this year, okay, you know, the snowstorm, they had to go back and forth to Detroit to play a game. 
Uh, then they had their, you know, one of their defensive backs. So you almost died. They've been through a lot of mostly. I think it finally caught up with them. You can only run out of motion for so long. It's very fatiguing. They get the game at home. Cincinnati got job. That game should not have been uh, in Buffalo. They were up in that game and they were going to win that game on that Thursday night when one of the Buffalo players went down. Thank God he's, he's doing okay now. But the fact is, Joe Burrow didn't complain. He says, hey, hey, fellas, get on my back. Let's go up to Orchard Park and let's win this game. They manhandled uh, the Buffalo Bills. And I think the Buffalo Bills at some point in time, they're going to have to start looking at Sean McDonough and say, is this the guy that really can get us over the hump? Give us uh, your take on that, Jack. I think you, you, had, uh, you had a good week last week. You also had the Bengals plus five and a half. So you kind of nailed that. Uh, what was your overall take on that game, watching it? Well, I mean, watching it, I guess <clears throat> my biggest take is that I thought the Bills got out schemed a little bit. There was some stuff that I thought the Bengals did that the Bills just couldn't seem to uh, adjust to. I will say, it, <laughs> Nate mentioned this earlier, the the Bills couldn't establish the run. Okay, that's important in the snow. But the thing with the Bills is that uh, they haven't been able to establish the run all year. They don't have a running back. Josh Allen sure, is yeah. there. Josh Allen. Yeah, Josh Allen, right. He's their running back. Um, right. And what's funny, Sheriff Clark, about that is like in the playoffs, Allen has um, traditionally they've used his legs a lot. And I don't think he was able to really do that uh, this week or last week as well. And I think, you know, some of that could have been the snow, but, you know, they, they just they don't have a, dyna a dynamic tailback. And so when you take out the, the, the throwing game with a game like that in the snow, there's just not a lot of offense to be had. Uh, what was really surprising about the Bengals is how they're able to put in these offensive linemen who are basically backups, shift them around on the line, give them, you know, their first start at left guard or whatever, and still be able to mildly protect Joe Burrow. Now Burrow gets the ball out pretty quickly um, and he's pretty good under pressure. That's one of the reasons they're always winning, uh, but it's been, it was pretty incredible to watch. And the, the Bengals narrative is funny because last week it was like, Oh, well, all these offensive linemen, no way they can keep up with the Bills. The Bills and the Chiefs are going to, you know, be in a rematch. Now this week it's, oh, the Bengals are incredible. The Chiefs stink. So it's it's a hard narrative to understand, too, because it, it shifts with the Bengals a lot. Um, and you can see that with all the public money that's being bet on Cincinnati this week. Uh, pretty much everybody loves Cincinnati. Um, so, you know, that's part of it too, but yeah, I mean, in that game, I just thought McDermott got out coached and the bills just didn't play well. And, you know, Josh Allen is reverting back to an, an older or younger version of Josh Allen. Um, since Brian Dable left, he's back to throwing a bunch of picks in the red zone and making bad decisions. Well, you know, the thing is in, in, in reference to what you just said, you mentioned that the bills couldn't get their passing game going maybe because of the snow. It was snowing for Joe Burrow too. That's what I mean right. by that guy. Give it down. He says, whatever right. you guys throw up here, I'll tell you about the Chiefs. Chiefs, dynamic offense. You know, Mahomes, of course, great. The Chiefs are soft. The key to beating the Chiefs, punch them in the nose early on in the game, meaning out physical them, and you can beat the Chiefs anywhere, including in Arrowhead. The games that they've lost this year, look at the Super Bowl they lost. They got out physical, and they haven't gotten more physical since then. They're a finesse team. Cincinnati's a grind it out in the trenches type of team. I give them a good chance to to win that game tomorrow, at least to uh, to cover. All right, you're on Godzilla Wins. Great to have you with us. Our panel, Jack Fredericks, who's also the editor in chief of Godzilla Wins. Go to GodzillaWins.com. He's also my son, and uh, much much better looking than me. Takes takes after mom. Also with us, Nate Perry. Nate, our uh, senior contributor and writer for Godzilla Wins. Nate, based in Reno. Jack is in Tunica, Mississippi. And uh, our special guest today. Hope to have him as a regular now because of his football knowledge sheriff david clark with us and uh cowboys fan we got cowboys fan we got niners fan we got titans fan and if you want to write for godzilla wins if you uh are a writer aspiring you might maybe want to be a sports writer or something like that you have a, a son daughter niece nephew friend that wants to get into the business just go to godzillawins.com you can email Jack there, we're looking for writers. These are paid jobs. They're not full-time jobs, but they're paid by article. We're looking for great writers with passion about their team. And so go to GodzillaWins.com. This segment brought to you by our great friends at Colonial Downs in 
Virginia, if you're in there, Rosie's Gaming, my favorite place to go. They paid out over $450 million in jackpots. Richard just won 147 large in Rosie's in New Kent on a $2 bet. Bob, 57000 in Rosie's in Hampton. Ready for this, Rosie's in Richmond had three winners of over 100000 during the week of Christmas alone. This is on fire. And of course, uh, Colonial Downs Racing Stars in July. Ann and I have a box there. Never miss it. We basically move our entire company inside our suite at Colonial Downs until the meet's over. New games at Rosie's. They include Ultimate Fire Link, Rake and Bacon, Ann's favorite Wheel of Fortune. Learn more about Rosie's rewards and jackpots at Rosie's Gaming. Dot com And you can go to Rosie's at New Kent, Vinton, outside of Roanoke, or Rich Vegas, right by our studio, Hampton, Dumfries, Collinsville, and coming soon to Euphoria. Go to rosiesgaming.com. That's rosiesgaming.com. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, we've got a couple big games. This is the conference championship, which a lot of people say are better games than the Super Bowl because you've still got four teams in them. It's very rare you get a uh, uh, you get a phony team at this level. You got to win enough games to get there during the regular season <clears throat> and the playoffs. So why don't we go ahead and start? We've been talking about Cincinnati and Kansas City. Let's go ahead and start uh, with that game, which is going to be in Kansas City. That is actually the second game on Sunday, and um, right now um, Kansas City is one and a half on draft picks, one and a half point favorites. Uh, they opened up at two and a half, immediately went down to one. So all the public money getting on the Bengals, and now it's down. Uh, I think uh, since he is a one and a half point underdog on DraftKings right now. A lot of people have respect for Mahomes, the Chiefs, Arrowhead. I'm going to start with Jack. On your pick, here we go. Bengals at Chiefs, Chiefs minus one and a half. Jack, lead us off. So I don't really even have that uh, nuanced of an analysis. A lot of times, as you know, on this show, I'll spend a lot of time talking about DVOA or some advanced analytics the, to maybe gain an edge. The problem with this is that I, the, when you get to this point, everybody's in the top five or 10 in all these DVOA categories. So you can't really find much. Uh, value in looking at some of the advanced analytics when there's only four teams left and they're the best four teams, especially when it's not like some sort of upset and, you know, the Jags snuck in there or something like that. Um, so you can't really see anything with DVOA. What I am looking at are some trends. We've been talking about this all year long. The Chiefs don't cover games. They just don't cover the spread. They haven't done it this year. They don't do it last year. They always are favored because they're one of the best teams in the NFL. But just listen, I'm going to list off some of these trends and then I'm going to give you my pick, but you probably can assume who I'm going to pick just based on this. This is the Chiefs trends against the spread. They're two, five and one in their last eight games against the uh, on, on grass. Sorry, they're nine, 24 and one in their last 34 games versus AFC opponents. They're two, eight and one against the spread in their last 11 games overall. They're 1-8-1 and one against the spread in their last 10 home games. They're 0-5 oh against the spread versus a team with a winning record. The Chiefs don't cover. We've been talking about this all year. If you're just – you don't have to be a trends uh, guy or a trends betting guy to understand that the Chiefs don't cover these games. Maybe the spread here is short enough where they do. I know that Nate's going to talk a lot about how, oh, well, the public is a square and – uh, everybody's on the Bengals, but you know the Chiefs. The line has been moving a lot because of uh, Mahomes' ankle, etc. I just I don't I don't even care to talk about you know the Bengals' grit and Burrow and getting back to a second Super Bowl and all that. These two teams are too evenly matched to take the favorite, and the key, the Chiefs don't cover. Meanwhile, the Bengals are five and zero, five zero and one in their last six games, um, where they allow less than ninety yards rushing. They're nine and one against the spread in their last 10 games on grass. They're 13, two and one against the spread versus a team with a winning record. They're six and one against the spread uh, in their last seven games after allowing 250 yards passing in the previous game. I could go on. This list goes on and on and on. The Bengals cover, the Chiefs don't. You take the team that covers. That's the Bengals. That's my pick. I'm going with Cincy. 
You know what? I'm going to uh, read a quote here on Get Her Live. And uh, thanks, guys, for getting in the chat. Rick's, Rick, I'm sorry, Rich Paxton nails it. He says, I like Mike Tyson's quote. Everybody has a game plan until they get punched in the face. And uh, I love the Bengals in this game. I, I bet them as soon as I hit, uh, we were going to, we were going to uh, wherever we were, Orange County. As soon as Ann and I hit Michigan uh, Monday, I bet the Bengals immediately. I emptied my DraftKings account on the Bengals. I'm like, I'm just all in. After that game on Sunday, I mean, Kansas City is just not that good. I'm with Sheriff Clark 100%. I think he nailed it. You punch them in the face. They're not a physical team. I just, I can't, and I don't think their defense is that good. I'm not going to give you, like, all of these spreads and everything. I just don't think they're that good of a defense. I mean, you know, Jacksonville, okay, they got a backdoor cover last week. That was like asinine. They kick a field goal with 10 seconds to go to get a backdoor. So they win by a 10. Uh, they win by what, whatever it was, seven when the spread was nine. But the Chiefs just aren't that good of a team, especially on defense. I'm with the Sheriff. I think Bengals go in there. Burrow's got a chip on his shoulder that whole debacle that went on about the coin flips and everything else. I think since, since Cincinnati goes in there, I don't see how this, these Chiefs are going to stop them. I think they're, they're going to get out physical again, punched in the face like Sheriff Clark and Paxton says. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember a game at this level where I was so confident. And look, guys, I'm not a Bengals fan, right? They, they always beat the Titans, so I can't stand the team. But I got to go with reality here. I love Cincinnati. I think they should be three. I'm getting, I think I bet them at one. So uh, my pick here, 100% Bengals plus one. Let's go to Nate. I guess I'm like the lone dissenting voice for the, for the Chiefs um, in some ways. I mean, for me, it really just comes down to, I mean, I, 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 I've talked about this. Jack, Jack was right. Um, I mean, like 70% of the bets are on the, on the Bengals, but they're only getting like 50% of the money, which means that it's like kind of getting a lot of square betters, um, which is generally a thing that I sort of move away from. Um, so for me, it, it, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of like, what is the public narrative? And the public narrative right now is Joe Burrow's, you know, the best and everyone needs to respect him and nobody's been respecting him. And, you know, this is a good time to hop on the bandwagon, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, you know, quarterback's the most important position in the league. And, like, Patrick Mahomes is the MVP of the league. Like, he's just – he has he has a bigger, better body of work with probably less talent on his offense than Burrow has. You know, Burrow has unbelievable receivers. He has great running backs. You know, he doesn't have an awesome offensive line, but he has great skill position players. And Mahomes basically has been playing with sort of a gutted offense in a lot of ways after they traded off Tyreek Hill. So I still think that it's Mahomes. I, I, I think that he's the best. And, and I still think it's Andy Reid. I think that Andy Reid is a better coach. And I think that Mahomes is a better quarterback. And I'm not willing to buy into this narrative that just because they haven't won here in the past or they've struggled against, against the, the Bengals, you know, they've lost three straight against the Bengals. I, I'm not willing to buy into this narrative that those trends are sort of predictive. I mean, Mahomes is unbelievable as a, as a short favorite. Or as an underdog, he's 17-6-1 and one against the spread as anything shorter than a three-and-a-half-point favorite, which he is here. Um, so I'm willing to just take Mahomes here and sort of go against the public just because I think that they're the better team with a better quarterback and the better coach. Uh, ultimately, I mean, I, I think that, you know, the Bengals' run has been hot and it's been nice and, you know, Joe Burrow's fun to root for. But I just think that the Chiefs are sort of the unsexy – but better team here. Um, so uh, that's, that's sort of where I want to go uh, for this game. I mean, how do you, how do you think they're going to stop Burrow though? Right. Cause all season they're long, their defense hasn't been that, that stellar Nate. I mean, you just look at it. I mean, the, their whole offense is Mahomes scrambling on a, on a third and 17. I mean, that's been their entire offense. I mean, I just don't see how you go into a conference game playing a team that's on fire like Cincinnati that just manhandled the Bills on two sides of the ball, and you got one guy on a bad ankle. I mean, how do you how do you you talk about a square bed? How do you square that? I mean, well, so for me, I mean, so 
here's how it's squared. If, if you like the Chiefs, play the over. Uh, they're not going to beat them with their defense. You got it. They're going to have to just get them in a shootout. So the, the smarter might bet might be if you, if you like the Chiefs, just play the over on the total because they're pro- it's probably going to turn into a shootout. The, the, the Chiefs aren't built to win sort of, sort of a slugging match with them. They aren't going to win a rock fight with the Bengals. They, they're going to have to just outscore them. So it's probably going to be a track meet if they, if they are in the game. So that's probably how I would justify that. And that's probably how I'd think about it is I think that it's probably just going to be a high scoring game. And if you ask me who I want the ball at the end of the game, it's probably going to be Mahomes and not Burrow. All right. Well, Sheriff, let's go to Sheriff Clark here. So um, what about the fact that uh, Kansas city has gotten beat by Cincinnati three straight times? I'll give you one stat here. When Joe Burrow this season has been sacked under five times, they are a stunning 14 and one when he sacked over five times, they're 0 and 3. So basically, if you, in order to stop Cincinnati and win a game, you've got to put Joe Burrow under pressure. So sacked five times or more 0 and 3, sacked under five times, a stunning 14 and 1. You look at this Chiefs defense and you're like, okay, they got one guy who's going to be sacking him. And, and, and look, they had great uh, protection last week with three of their offensive linemen out. Now, one, maybe two of them are coming back. I don't see it. Sheriff Clark. Well, let's sort that out a little bit. Um, first of all, the, the analytics, I always get a kick out of that. And, and I realize it's a big part of the gambling aspect. Uh, but I try to keep this stuff simple. When I look at these games, you know, point and a half spread to me, that's a pick game as far as I'm right. concerned. But uh, when you look at Joe Burrow, you know, you talk about sacking him and the record again, you get into analytics there. That guy, what did he get sacked nine times against the Titans last year? And still, he just keeps getting up and he doesn't care. He's going to hang in that pocket. He's not going to flinch. You don't have to really worry about him running. He's just going to hang in there. Now, as far as uh, the Chiefs, you know, like I said, punch him in the face. This game's going to be won in the trenches or lost in the trenches. And you punch him in the face early, not late, early. And and you're going to give yourself an edge there. Cincinnati can go anywhere and win. They've proven that. They won, they won in Arrowhead last year in the AFC Championship game. And I know that was last year, but if history is an indicator of the future, that tells me they can do this. So you want to talk about one and a half, two and a half, whatever, fine. You know, I'm a blue collar lunch pail guy. I just play it straight. In the trenches is where these games are going to be won. The Chiefs are going to have to stop, figure out how to stop Jamar Chase. The Bengals are going to have to try to figure out uh, how to stop, not Mahomes, this Pacheco guy. When you get that guy, and that's what the Chiefs do, they spread you out, they get the ball to their playmakers in space, and the yards after catch from these guys is phenomenal. So, you know, the, the, the Bengals can't just focus on the run because if you start putting six and seven in the box and they got to spread out, it's going to be a long afternoon. But I'm still going to go with my boy, uh, and I'm not a Bengals fan. Obviously, I'm a Cowboys fan. I just like the the moxie of that guy, uh, Joe Burrow. All right, Sheriff's going with Joe Burrow and the Bengals. So, Jack, John, and Sheriff Clark going with uh, the Bengals plus one. Nate, the uh, the naysayer here, is going with Mahomes and the Chiefs. So, we'll see what happens, Nate. You were 4-0 last week. So, uh, as they say, you're due to lose one. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens. I think this this game is going to be decided early. I, I think if since Cincinnati on their first drive goes right down the field, um, Mixon getting four and five, beating them off the ball, uh, off the blocks at the line of scrimmage, um, I think uh, Kansas City's in for a very long day. So we'll see what happens. So that's that. Okay, guys, well, let's get thing, to – go ahead, one Jack. Thing, one thing I'll just say real quick um, that Chair Clark reminded me of, um, Pacheco is – Extre- has been extremely useful in uh, the run game for the Chiefs lately. Since he doesn't have a bad defense, I don't know where that narrative. Right. Rush efficiency numbers aren't as good. So do look for Pacheco to have a pretty big game here. I just think even if it's a 
blowout, both these teams are, or if it's a shootout, not a blowout, excuse me, both these teams are still going to need the running, the run game. The Bengals really rely on Joe Mixon, but Pacheco's, you know, I mean, he's, he's like a real, um, real NFL star there and he's tough to stop. So um, I just, just keep, keep that in mind, especially if you're looking for some props. I haven't looked at the props lately um, for these games, but Pacheco's numbers could be an interesting one. The Bengals rush defense isn't great. It's okay. It's not like horrible, but it's um, their past DVO is a little better. Well, I can get it live. Radio Max says uh, Chiefs offense will be their defense. Um, I'm kind of in line with uh, what Nate said then earlier. I mean, if the Chiefs are going to win this game. It's going to have to be a shootout. They're not going to, they're not going to win this game on defense. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I mean, could if, if Mahomes has got the ball with three minutes to go and, you know, they're down by three or the game is tied or they're down by two, uh, you know the guy's going to find a way. I mean, he's a, he's unbelievable. But we also don't know the extent of his ankle injury, injury right? I mean, it, it didn't look he didn't look particular uh, particularly ginger last week. But here's the other thing, right? The all the media hype is on Mahomes. I mean, you would think. I mean, they were showing him walk. I mean, ESPN had him showing him walking around this week in practice. I mean, give me a breath. I'm so sick of this stuff, right? It's like. He's like the star of the NFL. He's the, they, they want him on TV. They want Mahomes there. They do all the ads for him. And so, you know, I'm flipping the channels with ESPN and I'm showing a, a video of him like walking on the field, like, oh, doesn't he look great? Give me a break. I'm so sick of this thing. I think Daddy goes in there and again, take that game last week and they blew Buffalo off the line of scrimmage on both sides. And so, and I think Kansas City's def def defense is not as good as the Bills. Remember, Buffalo went through the whole season having the number one defense in the NFL up until the end. And now we're going to try to compare that with Kansas City. I don't see it. I love the Bengals here. Okay, let's get to the NFC. We're going to start with Sheriff Clark because, well, he's an NFC fan. He's a Dallas fan. And we've got, um, we've got the Eagles at home, two and a half over San Francisco. Now, the biggest thing about this game last week, folks, is that in brilliant fashion, Eagles fans found a way to scam the system and get in early for their tailgating because the Eagles have a role because of all the drinking that goes on, right? You can only get in to tailgate and park so many hours prior to the game. But they found out that the Flyers had a game early on Saturday. So they all bought Flyers tickets and Flyers parking passes, which share the parking lot with the Eagles. So they got in for the Flyers game, bought all the tickets, didn't go to the game, went to tailgate, started up with the kielbasa and all got drunk. So that's how the Eagles uh, scammed it a week ago. Uh, then they go in, obviously, and they blow out the Giants. And that game was, as, as I predicted, I said it would be, a blowout but so we got uh eagles minus two and a half san francisco coming in hot as a pepper uh we're going to start right here with sheriff clark uh boy the eagles looked really good last week jalen hurts looked good but san francisco sheriff they just keep winning games and winning games and brock purdy had another great game a week ago he's got you know seven what eight eight starts um he doesn't make a mis mistake. Some of his passes were really just pinpointed. What's your take, Sheriff Clark? <laughs> John, I hate this game. I hate the Eagles. I hate their fans. I hate the 49ers. <laughs> I hate Joe Montana to Dwight Clark. I don't care who wins this game. As a matter of fact, I hope it ends in a tie. I know it can't. But it wouldn't bother me because I hate both of these teams. Obviously, the Eagles because they're in the NFC East and the 49ers because of their history, uh, except in the 90s, their history against the Dallas Cowboys. Well, let me add a little bit of uh, football to this besides the hate factor. But that's what the, the teams in the NFC East do to each other. The Giants hate us. The Redskins hate the Redskins. And yeah, that's still the Redskins as far as I'm concerned. They hate us. We hate them. <laughs> but look, let's let's. Let's be honest here. Philadelphia has put together a nice season. They were rolling real nice until Hertz got hurt. 
Uh, they have all the tools. They're strong up front. They're physical up front, both sides of the ball. They got a, a nice defense. And I got to pay, give them their props where it's due. The 49ers, on the other hand, they haven't played anybody. You know, we keep hearing about Brock Purdy. When has he been under the gun? I'll tell you right now that had Dak Prescott not been throwing the ball to the wrong team, and you would have had Purdy. He didn't have that good a, great a game last week. Yeah, he played it safe. He just played not to make a mistake. That's smart football. But I'll tell you what, he hasn't faced the defense, including the Cowboys, who didn't put a lot of pressure on him. He hasn't faced the defense like he's going to see uh, this Sunday. They're going into a raucous crowd. They got the cross the country travel. They have the three-hour time difference. That's not fun uh, to have to make adjustments for. The weather's probably going to be for crap in Philadelphia. It's going to be cold, maybe a little snow, blustery. Uh, I think Philadelphia wins this game, but like I said, I don't really care. <laughs> See, that comes, Sheriff Clark, from a true fan perspective. That's why uh, we asked you on our show today, and we know you bring the heat. You don't care who wins because you hate them both. I get it. Um, it's like, you know what? Everybody knows that I'm an Astro fan, so is Jack and Nate. And when our team gets knocked out of the playoffs, I don't watch a single game. I'm done. I don't care who wins the World Series, who gets there. As soon as we get knocked out, I don't turn an inning on of another game because I hate all the other teams. I, I even hate their beer. So I get it. Okay, uh, let's go to Nate. Nate, uh, you've, been all, you've been all over San Francisco here for a long time. Now they're going to Philadelphia. You're getting two and a half. You're a big Brock Purdy fan. Uh, what do you see here, here, Nate? Well, none of that's true. Um, I'm not a Brock Purdy fan, <laughs> and, um, but, but I was the only thing that I was good enough to do is be smart enough to know the Cowboys were probably going to beat the, or that the 49ers are going to beat the Cowboys last week. I mean, that was, you, you think that I'm a huge Brock Purdy fan, but it, it was just, they just were going to, the Cowboys were always going to lose that game. I just, as a Cowboys fan, I've been in that spot a lot. I saw it coming. You know, there's been a few times where I've, where I've backed the team playing the Cowboys on this show and I'm not sure that I've lost in giving out picks thus far. You can just see it when it's going to happen. Um, but for this game, no, I'm not a Brock Purdy fan. I mean, he's, he's in a weird spot. There's never been a rookie quarterback that's ever started a game in the Super Bowl, And, and that's something that I talked about in the column on Godzilla wins uh, that I wrote up and, and the people that have played in the AFC or NFC championship games as rookies is a weird list. Pat Hayden, uh, former former USC athletic director, Dieter Brock, Sean King, Ben Roethlisberger, Joe Flacco, and Mark Sanchez are the only people, there's six people that have ever started a game in the AFC or NFC championships as rookies. They've all lost, all of them. Um, and there's only one of them that managed to cover, and, and they covered a, basically a two-touchdown spread. So it's just like not a good historical spot for Brock Purdy, and I think that it's a worse historical spot for Brock Purdy considering that Previous to this, he was playing in a pretty bad Big 12 conference in college football, right, in Iowa State. So this is like, it's it's not even like a compare, there's not, a, he's never had a game that's this big. And I think it's fair to wonder if maybe this spot is going to be a little bit too big for Brock Purdy. Um, for, for a variety of reasons, right? He didn't look super comfortable in either game. They only scored one touchdown last week against a good Dallas defense, and now they're playing an even better Philly defense. Philly has a legitimate, better all-around defense than Dallas does. They're way better against the pass. So what what San Francisco is going to have to do is, is really get creative and establish the run game, which is also going to be tough because Philly has a much better run defense than Dallas does. So if we're just looking at last week as sort of a precursor to this week, I don't know if San Francisco has what it takes to be able to sort of crack this Philly team. I think that, I think that, I think that the Eagles, and it pains me to say this as a, as a fellow Cowboys fan, along with Sheriff Clark, it pains me to say this, but I think that the Eagles are probably the best team left. And I think the Eagles probably win the Super Bowl. So if, if I just had to bet, bet something now, I think Eagles win the Super Bowl. I think they beat either AFC team. I think they're just a better, more well-rounded team. So I, I, I like the Eagles here. If, if you want to get cute, play the under maybe i think points are going to be tough to come by both these defenses are legitimately good uh they're much better than the offenses are but 
I think that the Eagles probably win here and and cover. And I think this game is probably a low scoring sort of slug match, slugging match. Uh, but I just I just don't see how Purdy is the first guy that makes it to the Super Bowl as a rookie. I just, I, just, I just can't see it. Maybe maybe someone Wait else. Wait a minute. Did. I, didn't didn't uh, Dan Marino make it to the Super Bowl as a rookie? Then got beat. Then got blown out by uh, San Francisco. Check that. I don't. I think Marino won with Miami as a rookie. Okay. I think. I'll check it. I don't. I don't, I don't remember. I don't think but that's true. Check that. But but I think overall your your analysis is spot on because uh, and uh, I'll go now and then we'll go to Jack and get our our, our other comments in. I mean, yeah, like I, I'm not going to bet quick, a guy. Dad, I'm not good. Real quick, uh, Nate's analysis sucks. So go ahead, and then I'll tell you why that was like the worst. That was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So you go well, first, go ahead, and then no, I'll, no, go I'll, ahead. You, you, you're you're on fire. Go ahead. I mean, <sighs> searing analysis. Like Mark Sanchez lost in the AFC Championship game, like when Obama was president, and Brock Purdy played at Kansas State. Like this, like I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. Like I mean, like oh, no. Iowa State, uh, Iowa State, yeah, okay, Iowa State, yeah. Justin Fields played at Ohio State, so he played lots of good teams, and he stinks. So I mean, what you talking about? Like, come on, listen. Here's here's what I'll tell you. December 11th, Brock Purdy's first start, Tampa Bay, win, cover. Second start, Seattle, win, cover. Third start, Washington, win, cover. Fourth start, Las Vegas, win, doesn't cover. Uh, fifth start, Arizona, win, cover. Playoffs, Seattle, win, cover. Playoffs, Dallas, win, cover. All the Niners do with Purdy is win and cover, win and cover, win and cover, win and cover. That's all they do. This Those are all terrible is, teams. Uh, all I, of them. Yeah, they, they don't play any good teams. How can you? No, they're they, not. They didn't beat anybody. The Raiders, the, Seattle twice. Give me a break. Pardon? How can you? How, how can you? How can you get to the NFC Championship? winning two playoff games and then it's like oh both those teams are terrible like at some point you got to play a good team in the playoffs just because dallas lost and you guys are all upset doesn't mean they were a bad team dallas was a good team and san francisco was better on that day and they won and they covered i'm taking the niners here their defense is incredible uh they have amazing weapons those guys get open um they get separation i don't care about the eagles um run defense or whatever or the run offense i'm not worried about that I don't care about Brock Purdy in a big spot. I think he's proved that he can do enough to keep them close. Take the under as well. Nate's right about that. The point's going to be hard to come by. Uh, but you can't just say, well, every team that they play is horrible. Tampa Bay was in the postseason. Seattle was in the postseason. Um, Dallas is a good team. They were like 12 and whatever. So, you know, I mean, come on. Like, yeah, okay, Vegas stinks. Fine. They didn't cover that game. Uh, I'm going with the Niners here. I picked them in August to go to the Super Bowl. We're right here. I don't care who their quarterback is. I'm flying with the Niners. Um, and maybe they'll cover. I don't know. Listen, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Sheriff Clark. Uh, they didn't beat anybody. I mean, you can sit there and say, okay, they beat they beat Dallas. Dallas should have won that game. Dak but they didn't. Two but they didn't picks. win the game, and they didn't okay, cover. But, the, so. but they didn't beat anybody. You, you, your name and team, like, uh, they beat Seattle twice. Oh, like, you know, sh shiver my timbers, right? They beat the Cardinals twice. They beat the Rams. I mean, this guy, this guy the was Bucks on the, the practice playoffs. squad at the beginning of the season. But they, yeah, they're in the playoffs, but now, the, now this guy's playing a defense with speed he's never seen. And I'm with Nate also on the, the Kansas State thing, right? I mean, you get these quarterbacks, you know, it, 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 look, Big 12 football, you saw what happened to Texas Christian, right? They got what? They got being 70 to 7 by Georgia. Not like you're, you're playing in the SEC. You don't see the speed. This guy's never seen the speed and the physicality of this Eagles defense. And you're asking somebody, Brock Purdy, with, you know, a handful of starts under his belt, who played in the Big 12, who, which is a horrible conference. We saw that, right? They, they, they just don't have the speed. It's like when the Titans drafted that guy Mal Malik from Liberty University. This guy's not an NFL quarterback. It just turned him into a wide receiver. I mean, it's a joke. Liberty's out there playing what? Wolford? I mean, give me a break. You know, VMI? Give me a break. You can't win with these guys. You know, you want Jalen Hurts is legit. This guy is legit. And you saw it as David, as Sheriff Clark said earlier, right? The games that he was in. Eagles were beaten. Everybody gets hurt. They start losing. Then he comes back. They win again. So, yeah, San Francisco, Hype, McCaffrey, MCM, whatever Joe 
calls it. Yeah, all rah-rah. This guy's never seen a defense like he is going to see on Sunday. He's never seen it. I don't think he's prepared. And San Francisco hasn't beaten anybody. I mean, I, I agree with that 100%. They just haven't beaten any, anybody. And you look at the Eagles. The Giants came in. How many people are telling me, oh, the Giants are going to win seven and a half, fits a take, Giants are hot. To, that game was an absolute blowout. Giants were never in that game. As soon as the toss was over, they were out of that game. Now, the Eagles are at home. Those fans are going to go crazy. I think it was a, a, like, a, 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 like a Sheriff or Nate said, they, they got to fly three hours the other way. Here's the bottom line. This, this is two, two and a half, right? I, I said this a week ago, and I was wrong. So now I'm going to double down, right? The game is tied in the fourth quarter. Do you want Brock Purdy? Do you want your money on Brock Purdy or Jalen Hurts? To me, this has got to be the biggest no-brainer in the history. I think the whole San Francisco thing crashes on Sunday. I love the Eagles, minus two, minus two and a half. Sheriff Clark, uh, tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead. No, no. you're not wrong. I, I think – a couple of the X factors here, you have to throw that into the mix. Uh, you mentioned it, that crowd, you, the, the Philly crowd is, those people are crazy. They're, they're crazy out and they can rattle you. And Purdy won't be able to hear. He won't be able to think. He's never been in that situation before. The other thing is uh, McCaffrey's a little nicked up. So watch for that. But again, you know, as I, I try to keep this as simple as I can, this game's going to be won in the trenches. You're right. Did San Francisco uh, up front, the front four, outstanding. Eagles offensive line, outstanding, and then vice versa. So this will be a physical matchup. It's going to be a tough game. I think low scoring. I What the hell do I know, though? Uh, but at the same time, like I said, I hate these teams, but if you're going to hold a gun in my head and, and, and have me make a pick, it's going to be the Eagles because I want to win. Well, the other thing is, uh, uh, Nate, like Sheriff said, I mean, the Eagles fans are going to be there. They're, I think they're getting there now, right? They probably bought t- t- tickets <laughs> to the 76ers game or hockey or something, <laughs> scammed their way into the – this thing, those, those grills are starting up now. I mean, that that place is going to go berserk. It's going to be cold. Uh, so, look, I just – I don't see it. I think, I think the Eagles – all season, the Eagles has certainly looked like the best team in the NFL. Defense, offense – um the whole bit and now they're at home and they're there it's only two and a half i would have think this game would have been five and a half like i can't believe either of these lines i'd have laid three i'd have laid three with the Bengals. i'm getting one i'd have laid six with the eagles and it's only two and a half so i don't see either of these these spreads i think there's great value here for eagles and Bengals. um John, okay final believe- word Go ahead. John, I can't believe you gave up A.J. Brown, man. I, I still can't forgive you guys for that. Because we're the stupid franchise, right? <laughs> and that's why Amy went out. That's why Amy, Amy, the our owner, Amy the Magnificent, right, went to the Eagles game. She saw what was going on. She saw A.J. making fun of us. She was embarrassed. And on Monday, they flew back. She went to the office at 9 a.m. at John Robinson. She knocked on a door. He opened it. She fired him. See, that's leadership. <laughs> I don't care that we got beat seven in a row. I don't care that we were 0-9 against playoff teams. You know what? You got to fight. You don't have a roster to compete, right? You're over the salary cap. You don't have a roster who can compete with elite teams. So I'm knocking on your door at 9 a.m. on Monday. I've got your severance patches. Get the hell out of my stadium. <laughs> Go away. You know, firing your ass. And that's what they did. That's leadership. Even though the Titans 0-9 against play, we got so many issues. Guys, I want to thank our panel. Final picks here. I've got uh, on the Eagles the game. Jack's got uh, the Niners plus two and a half. Me, Nate, and Sheriff Clark want the Eagles minus two and a half. Hey, this segment brought to you by one of our favorite sponsors, TargetTrading.co. TargetTrading.co. I have got so many students that have gone to Target Trading. They train you. Patrick Aswell, my man. Trains you how to do futures trading. Everybody has been successful with it. We've got about 85 students in there from our radio and TV show. Everybody is happy. All the emails I get, John, thank you for turning me on. They love targettrading.co, and it is the number one futures trading uh, disciplinary class in the world, and everybody has been successful 
with it, still waiting for somebody to say, hey, I'm not happy. Haven't heard that. Go to targettrading.co. Patrick Asselon, you hear him on, on my show every week. You want to make some money. If we're in a recession. You got laid off. You got some time. You can put as much time as you want or as little time as you want. Targettrading.co. Patrick Asselon, he's going to get, he's going to talk to you personally and get you squared away. Go to targettrading.co. Guys, thank you for being with us. I want to thank our panel, Sheriff Clark, Nate Perry in uh, Reno, Jack Fredericks, my son in Tunica, Mississippi. Jack, great job. We'll see on our different pick here on the Eagles. Jack, also the editor of Godzilla Wins. Go to GodzillaWins.com, GodzillaWins.com. Get all your content on there. Monster picks and predictions on GodzillaWins.com. Thank our panel. We're going to see you next week talking about these games, Super Bowl coming up. We've got everything else coming up. we got March Madness. You want to stay with us.